ho, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Ah, thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Hello. You're late. I'm sorry, darling. Can you ever forgive me? For being late, yes. But what you've done to your hair, never. It was horrible. I was in New York. I went to Eduardo. Oh. He's highly recommended. By slaughterhouses, coast to coast. Bobby, Alexis, get her washed and prepped. This is going to require a great deal of time and money. It's all there. Do you want to count it? Why? You know I'll kill you if it isn't. Hold it! Going somewhere. I guess you didn't learn from last time, huh? <laughs> You've had nothing on me. I never touched any drugs. No, but what you did touch is $80,000 used in the purchase of drugs. That makes you a drug dealer. That means you'll be perming hair in prison for the next 20 years. Merry Christmas, Marty. Read him his rights, Jeff. You have the right to remain silent. What, what in the world is going on? It's OK, ladies. Everything's all right. Do you know what you just did? I just arrested You arrested a, a genius. He is the only man on this earth who understands my wave. You bureaucrats are all the same. You never stop to consider the consequences of your actions. You got the hairdresser. Yeah, yeah. You sure you got all the money back? For the third time, Alex, I'm sure. Because Marty's been, you know, he stayed out of jail for a long time because he's never got caught with drugs, so the, the money's our whole case. It's safe and sound in the evidence room. And, and I'll need paperwork. You'll get paperwork. Enough said. You know, because I'm not the kind of DA who's going to be all over you with every little detail. I already am that kind of DA, but listen, Tony, this is a really big case for me, you know? You know, I mean, this case could really jumpstart my whole career. My tush is on the line here. Don't worry. Your tush is in my hands. Tony. We took up a collection for Jeff's daughter. How is she? Well, he hasn't said much. Last I heard, the doctors were saying 50-50. And we think we have problems. Yeah. Well, we wanted to get her something really special for the holiday, but we don't know what to get, you know, under the circumstances. Well, Rachel and I are going to be going by there tomorrow. Do you want us to pick something up? Would you? Yeah. Thanks. Have a nice day. It was a nice work out there today. Oh, thank you, sir. Jeff, I really wish you'd reconsider and take some family leave. Well, I appreciate it, boss. Uh, I'd like to be home right now, but the medical bills and everything, we just can't afford it. Yeah. You know, Lucinda says she doesn't believe in Santa, but you should see this letter she wrote him. You know, it's about yay long. And she wants a horse. I tell her, where are we going to keep a horse? She says, in my room. Any word on a donor? Yeah, we're top of the list now. The doctor says there's a decent chance we'll get a heart and they'll be able to do the transplant in time, but, but all we can do is pray. Which is... well, listen to me. I'm, I'm praying somebody else's kid will die before Christmas so my kid will live to see hers. Merry Christmas! 
Thank you, ma'am, and a Merry Christmas to you. And to you. Drop in the bracelet, too. Now! And the rings. And the wallet. Come on, hurry! Turn and walk away and keep walking. Don't make any noise and don't look back. Got it? Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! You can't believe it's happening. You're just so stunned. It's the last person you'd expect to be a thief. Well, we have some suspects for you to take a look at, OK? They won't be able to see me through that, will they? I mean. Oh, no, no. They'll just see their own reflection. Oh, OK. You OK? Mm. Send them in. All right, come in. Line up, back to the wall. I thought they were going to break into a chorus of Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer. This is the second woman this week. we got to catch this jerk. Santa's only got a few more shopping days till Christmas. These women are all rich, uh, well-dressed. Yeah, but not flashy. You know, they didn't seem to flaunt it or anything. They just have a certain air about them. Exactly. Classic. Classic, yeah. Well, then, all we need is a female officer with a certain air to be the decoy. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Not me. Uh-uh. You're ripped, Madison. Ho, ho, ho. No, I, I don't want to be the decoy. I'm no good at it. I flunked decoy 101 at the academy. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> what is this horse doing here? <laughs> Did somebody in this house order a horse? A horse? <clears throat> Look, honey, the scallies brought you some presents. <laughs> Lucinda, this is from the precinct, from all the men and women who work with your daddy. What do you think we should call them? How about Officer Pony? I like it. Can I take him outside? Honey, you have to remember what the doctor said, OK? You need to get lots of rest so you can get better. I know, but I've been resting forever. I know. When I get better, I'm going to be able to ride a real horse. I'm going to go fast. Get to do this next Christmas, will I? Sure, sure you will. No, I won't. Next year you won't let me open my present early, because I won't be sick then. <sighs> you better take advantage of it while we can, don't you think? Yeah. It's a ranch. You see, it's got horses and a barn and a corral. Will you help me put it together? I'd love to. Oh, God, I haven't even offered anybody anything to drink. I, <laughs> I was going to make some tea. Great.
We have to attach the barn roof here. Here. Look. It even has little tiny bales of hay. And the Appaloosa. Right. Lucinda, how do you know so much about horses? My grandma had a farm upstate. We used to go there every summer. She died last year. It wouldn't be so bad if I could see Grandma again. Hello. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, right away. That was Dr. Ravenson. They found a heart. God. Oh, God. <laughs> they found a heart. It'll be in Eastbridge in half an hour. We gotta get Lucinda to the hospital right away. I think maybe we should call an ambulance. I think that would be faster. Forget that. I got something much faster. That was great, Mr. Scally. We must have five red lights and I got the flash of siren. Will you take us home, too? Sure. And maybe I'll let you drive. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Heart's in the ambulance. It's on its way. Hi, Lucinda. How do you feel? Okay. Good. After today, you're going to feel a lot better. We're going to make sure of that, okay? Okay. Now, this nice young man, he's going to take you and help you get ready. And your mom and your dad, they'll be right at your side when you wake up. Will Officer Pony be there? Who? That's a friend of hers. Sure he will, honey. He's gonna be waiting there to see you. Oh, excuse me. See you later. See you, Kim. We have every reason to be optimistic about this. We're getting a good, healthy heart. You're saying, Steve. I can't believe this. When? A few minutes ago. Apparently, he tried to cut around a car and didn't make it. It wasn't my fault. I pulled over as soon as I heard the siren. Listen up, Stan. Get the heart and bring it here fast. Hey, it's in an ice chest in the ambulance. No, it's not. And it's not on the ground anywhere nearby. What? It's just gone. Somebody must have taken it. Trust me, we're gonna find it and we're gonna get it back here in time. I'm going to the scene now. I'll call you the minute. I'm going with you. There's nothing you can do there, Jeff. They need you here. I'll stay too. How long is the heart good for? Assuming that it stays properly packed in ice, four to six hours is optimal. Six hours? No, as I said, that's optimal. We've been successful up to 12 hours. But Lucinda's heart is in a low output state. I'm worried about her blood pressure. Now, factoring that in, we have to have that heart by 6 o'clock tonight, no later. No witnesses. We don't know what happened. It's just gone. The ambulance went off the road. Looks like the back door got knocked open. I don't know. Maybe somebody came by and just... What about the driver? They took him to Eastbridge Community. He was unconscious. Tell the hospital to let us know when we can talk to him. Did you talk to that kid over there? What kid? Son, do you mind if we talk to you for a moment? To hurt you. I just want to ask you some questions. We're not paying the rent. Not until he fixes the roof. What? The landlord. He's got to fix it. I don't count any subpoenas. He gets it wrong. Slow down. I don't have a subpoena. I just want to know if you saw that accident. The landlord didn't send you? No, I'm the police commissioner. Someone took something from the ambulance. We need your help. 
police commissioner. So if I help you out, maybe you'll give me a hand with this lunatic landlord? Did you see the accident? <laughs> Unbelievable. Dude, slam that blue car and tipped over the side. I'd like to drive an ambulance. That's an awesome job. Did anyone go near the ambulance before the police got there? Yeah, a brown station wagon came down this road and pulled up next to it. A guy got out and went into the ambulance. And he came out with a... Uh... A little ice chest? Yeah. <laughs> what was in it? Beer? What'd the guy look like? A white guy with a ponytail. Old. How old? Old. Like, 20. Did you see anything else? Uh, how about a license plate? No. Wait, there was a six. That's my lucky number. First number, last? Last number. Hey, you're pretty good. You ever thought about becoming a cop? No, but I'll let you know if that ambulance thing doesn't pan out. <laughs> Thanks, kid. We've only got until 6 o'clock. If we don't find it by then, it won't matter. We're looking for a beat-up brown station wagon. Last license plate number is 6. Stan? Already checking with DMV. The driver of the station wagon is white, mid to late 20s, ponytail. John, you got the airport, train, and bus stations covered? Yes, sir. We got our people on it and Groverton Police Center. There's six of theirs. Great. Let's hope the heart's still in Eastbridge, not on a plane out of the country. We're getting the names of everyone with a child waiting for a hut in the Tri-County area in case this guy's looking for a buyer. No, we're not. I just talked to the East Coast Organ Procurement Organization. They put out the donor list and they update them every Thursday. They're not going to give us a copy due to patient confidentiality. Get a warrant now. Use Judge Fremont. OK. We got five and a half hours to find the hut. This is Jeff's kid. It's family. Let's go. What do you mean, what did he look like? He looked like Santa Claus. He took my watch, my ring. OK, here's what I want you to do. Talk to Rennie Levine at the Port Authority. He owes me, and now's the time for payback. I just got the organ donor list. They're arranged in order of urgency. Jeff and Deborah are at the top. There's seven other families also waiting for a heart. They all say they have not been approached about a black market heart. Mike, monitor the hospitals. If any of the families on this list set up a surgery, I want to know the details. Great. Boss, I got something. No matchups for the Brown station wagon, but a guy whose license plates end in six reported them stolen yesterday. Sid, put this license on the air as a possible and set up a phone trace on Jeff's house and Lucinda's hospital room. You got it. If this guy's using stolen license plates, some planning went into this. And that may mean... The ambulance driver's in on it. I don't care if he's in a coma. I want to talk to him now. You got it. This is very much against hospital policy, Commissioner. We're not even certain that he's regained consciousness. Here's something we are certain of, Doc. A little girl's life is at stake. I strongly advise you not to go in this room. I strongly advise you not to try and stop me. All right, it's your responsibility. Fine, it's my responsibility. Where is he? I have no idea. He faked the accident. This is top priority. I want an APB on the ambulance driver. Pull his license photo from the DMV and wallpaper Eastbridge with it. Dust his ambulance for prints and run him through NCIC. Call Brewer Ambulance and get an address on this guy. Right. I'm going back to the precinct. I'm going to have some backup waiting for you. We got to take this guy alive and we got to take him now. Tony, you got a second? No. Half a sec. Look, the arraignment's been moved up. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I gotta talk in case I need you to testify. No. OK, the arresting officer was Jeff Hartley. Can I talk to him? Not now, Alex. Can I get the money out of the evidence room? Paperwork. I'll get it. I'll be back. Bye-bye. Thank you. Nice to see you. OK, fine. Good. Good. Bye. Boss, we got the taps on the house in the hospital room. Good. Keep me posted. We ran the prints on the ambulance driver. His real name is Guy Villars. He used an alias and some fake ID to get the job. He's also served some time for robbery and extortion. And he's at it again. Rachel, you should go home. You got your own family to take care of. I want to stay. I just talked to the babysitter. Sarah and David are in very good hands. Look, 
Why don't you two go get something to eat? I can stay here with her. I, I don't think I could eat right now. Rachel's right, honey. This could drag on. You know something? Um, we didn't think that we could have children. She was like a miracle to us, you know? A gift from God. God, I'm so afraid he's gonna take his gift back. Hartley's just stepped out. Can I take a message? I found something that belongs to him. In a cooler. You found the heart? Yeah, I found the heart. Boss, we've got some at the hospital room. Thank God. Um, can you get it over to Eastbridge General Hospital right away? It's an emergency. Who are you? I'm a good friend of the Hartleys. Where are you right now? Well, hey, I'm a good Samaritan. I'll give it back. But I think I deserve a little reward, don't you? Stay cool, Rach. Of course you do. You'll get one as soon as you bring the heart. Good. Yeah, see, a fair reward in a situation like this is, you know, you figure my time in trouble. We got a location? She has to keep talking. Let's call it 75000 $75,000? There's a note that tells you what to do at the nurse's station. Wait a minute. They can't possibly raise that kind of money. They want their kid to live. They better. Where is he? Sorry, boss. We didn't get it. <sighs> the ransom note says he wants you to put the money in a briefcase and be at the corner of Marshall and Pine at 10 after 4. The car will pick you up and take you to the handoff. Mike, take this to the lab. How are we going to get $75,000? I'll get it. In two hours? We already owe the world. I'll get the money. Forget the money. We'll get the heart and him at the drop. We better. I know it looks bad, but you be wired. And we'll be following you front, back, and sideways. As soon as he makes his move, we'll get him. I'm not handing this guy an empty briefcase. I'm not going to give him any reason to go back on this deal. We're talking about my daughter's life here. Jeff, use your head. You know the odds of getting the heart back if he gets away with the briefcase, whether the money's in it or not. Our best bet is to get him at the drop. What if he gets away? He won't get... What if he does? Now, there better be $75,000 in that briefcase, because if it's empty, we have no chance of getting the heart back. Isn't that what you would do if it was your kid? Isn't it? I don't know. We'd do everything we could. Yeah. Marshall and Pine is a good-sized intersection. That should help us disappear into the crowd. We're going to have seven teams stationed in a circle around the pickup point. Now, we have to do this discreetly. If he bolts, we don't. We get on the radio and have the next team take him. Understood? Great. We'll rotate cars every half mile. He'll be watching. What about a SWAT at the pickup? Take him out there. There's nothing I'd like more at this point, but we can't do anything until we know we've got the heart. We found the ambulance driver's apartment. He cleared out yesterday. Bet he hasn't gone far. Either he'll be at the drop or his partner will lead us to him. Thanks. You know, I've been meaning to tell you, I read about this really great dude ranch up in the Adirondacks. They specialize in families with small children. The kids get to ride and rope. It doesn't cost very much money, either. I thought maybe when this is all over, you and Jeff could look into it. I know how much Lucinda loves horses and everything. She doesn't deserve to be going through this. Neither do we. It's not enough that she was sick all that time. Now we have to be at the mercy of this. I swear to God, 
if he was standing here in front of me right now, I would kill him. Rachel, I'm sorry. I just, I feel so helpless, you know, and uh, God knows what Jeff is going to do. Look, you've got every right in the world to yell and scream and fall apart. Afterwards. When all this is over. When all that Lucinda has to look forward to is growing up healthy and strong. Yeah, but you just don't have the luxury right now. Jeff needs you. Lucinda needs you. I need you to help me make some more tea. Come on. You know, sometimes I think I should give all of us a manual. How to be a cop's wife. How to pretend they're not going out there risking their lives every day. How to pretend you're not angry at them when they do come home. I should have been so scared they might not. How to pretend you're keeping it together when you're coming unglued. Yeah. And how to do it all without going nuts. There's no other way. I was going to tell you I got it from a bank. By the time you found out, it wouldn't matter. I did go to a couple, but when you're in debt like I am, you... I even thought of robbing one. You caught me stealing money from the evidence room. I caught you thinking about stealing money from the evidence room. Something anyone in your position would do. Fortunately, you thought twice, and you didn't do it. Put your badge back in your pocket and get your butt in the squad room. I want you to go over the plans for the drop, see if we missed anything. Heels are killing me. The important thing is you look good. I think the important thing is in the next vice operation, you're going in drag. Oh, wait, Sid, I was just kidding. Sid?
I'd like to make a donation. Thanks, babe. Wanna grab dinner? What? I'm knocking off in half an hour. You can't ask me out. You're Santa Claus. Hey, I am also a man. <laughs> okay, we got 30 minutes till the drop. Let's move out and get positioned. I'm gonna nail this guy. Tony! Tony! Where's the money? Why is it not in the evidence room? Why did I trust you? Alex, come into my office. You took it to help that kid, didn't you? Don't deny it. I know what's going on. It's all over the station. I don't deny it. What? Of course you deny it, Tony. Tony, this is serious. That money's our whole case. Don't you look at me like that. Look, I feel sorry for your cop, okay? I feel terrible. But this is against the law. I moved it for safekeeping. You'll have it tomorrow when you need it. I wasn't here. We never had this conversation, but let me tell you something, Tony. Anything happens to that money, Marty Skates, then you gotta start answering to the U.S. attorney, and then it's your career. Now, if we were having this conversation, I would advise you strongly and strenuously to reconsider. You want to reconsider? No. No, no. You're trying to kill me, aren't you? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Sent him a cab. Everybody stay cool. We don't have either perp in sight yet. They're heading east on Marshall Ave. I'll take the first lap. So where are we going? The guy said you'd tell me. He said I'd tell you? That's what he said. What's this? Oh, he said to give you this. A paper bag. With a cell phone in it. He's calling Jeff on a cell phone. Get ready for a move. I want a team in front, now. Hello? Hartley, you got the money? Yeah. Do exactly as I say. If you don't, I toss the heart. We understand each other? Yes. Tell the driver to turn left on Bridgeway. Do it now. Turn left on Bridgeway. All units, he's headed over the Longworth Bridge. It's wide open country on the other side. It's gonna be hard to follow on there. All right, we've turned left. Open the window on your left. He may be underneath the bridge. Let's get some backup down there. As soon as you clear the girders, throw the briefcase out and over the railing. What about the heart? When do I get the heart? When I get the money, I'll call you and tell you where it is. Wayne, we're running out of time here. This is my kid's life. Just shut up and do what I say. Get ready. Now. He tossed the money over the bridge. He's under the bridge. That boat is Shelton's landing. Maybe we'll get lucky. I think we just did. There's the Brown Station way.
Everybody's gone too. Someone was waiting for him. The ambulance driver? I guess he didn't want to split the money. That's it, it's over. Don't give up, we still have time. Mike, take three officers, go over the boat and the car. Jeff, you ride with me, come on. Donor list. Two and a half months. We're status one. We got the uh, top priority since she's so sick. Has anyone ever approached you, offered you anything on the black market? You mean a heart? No, why? What would you have done if someone offered it? I don't know. I... If I thought it would save my daughter's life, I guess I would have accepted it. And then you'd take your name off the list, wouldn't you? I suppose, yeah. Have to make up some kind of excuse like we were moving to Europe or something. Why? That ambulance driver killed his partner. That means he's greedy. He's already got the money. And he still has the heart. What's he gonna do with it? You think he's gonna sell it to someone on the list? I think it's possible. But you've been looking at the other people on the list. Maybe we should have been looking at the people who had the name on the list and then took it off. This is C1. I want to know if anyone's taken their name off the heart donor list recently. Roger, C1. I want you to go back to the hospital, Jeff. I'll let you know. Boss, what you did for me with the money was, uh... I'm sorry. I didn't want you to put your job on the line. There's only one thing that's important here, Jeff, and I ain't my job. I tried to warn you. You can't say I didn't. Oh. Here's your career. Here's a toilet. You hear a flushing sound? The arraignment's not till tomorrow. What are you gonna do? You're gonna magically pull the money out of thin air, huh? Huh? You got some dancing girls to go along with this act, huh? I want her on an epidrip now. What's happening? The pressure's dropping. We're gonna try and elevate it with epinephrine. There's a couple over in Groverton who took their name off the donor list. Mr. and Mrs. Keith Moore. Do we know where they are? They're not answering their phone. Well, who's their doctor? Uh, Dr. Lawrence, Groverton General. Yes, Commissioner. I treated the Moore's son, Bobby. He has a single ventricular chamber. What do you mean, treated? Well, Bobby's condition isn't critical. He has a year, maybe more, to get a heart. But uh, they were very impatient. They decided to try some alternative therapy. What kind of alternative therapy? Well, there's a clinic in San Marta. They stress uh, vitamins, diet. When was the last time you spoke to the Moors? Well, yesterday, just before they left. I tried to tell them it wasn't a good idea. Thank you, Doctor. They took their son to a clinic in San Marta yesterday. San Marta? If you were going to use a black market heart, you'd have to use it out of the country, right? Yeah. The driver would have to wait until he got the ransom money. He'd have a plane standing by. If we can find a, a charter flight to San Marta, we might still have a shot. General, with an escort. You and your friends in San Marta, you're already looking at a federal offense. You better pray this little girl doesn't die. I know a man invented high heels. Ho, 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 ho! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, madam! Merry Christmas. Is there a standard donation? Yes, there is, madam. All of it. 
and the earrings, and the bracelet. Hold it! <laughs> A bracelet? Here's a bracelet. Let's go. Come on, let's go. started up nicely. So far, there's no signs of rejection. I'm very <laughs> satisfied. She's in post-op if you want to see her. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Wait. You forgot something. We'll come and see you later today. <laughs> thank you both. Merry Christmas. Oh, it's the merriest we've ever had. Well, you got this one pretty close. I'm doing court in 20 minutes. I told you not to worry. Next time you tell me my tush is in your hands, believe me, I'm gonna worry. <laughs> what was that about this tush being in Long there? story. So, how are you? Tired? You hungry? Wanna buy me a big breakfast? Put me to bed? You know, sometimes I feel like there really is a Santa Claus. 